There's no record of a special ceremony, and no video cameras documented the first log harvested by Saul Simpson, who founded the S.G. Simpson & Company in 1890. Solomon Grout Simpson was born 1843 in Quebec, Canada. In 1865, he moved to Carson City, Nevada to seek his fortune in the silver and gold mines. Saul was luckier in love than in prospecting, marrying there his beloved Mary Garrett Tolley Simpson. In 1878, they moved to Seattle and Saul began grading roads in this growing frontier town and building railroads into the wilderness of Mason and Grays Harbor counties. Saul's logging career took off in Mason County, harvesting and delivering logs for the Port Blakely Mill Company to the tidal booming grounds of New Camilchi, near the present-day town of Shelton. Saul was a true innovator, being one of the first to use draft horses for grading and logging instead of oxen. As Simpson and Company grew, Saul struck up a business relationship with a young man named Mark Reed. Mark became a skilled manager at Simpson and Company, and he solidified their relationship by marrying Saul's older daughter, Irene, in 1901. With Saul and Tolly having no sons, the Simpson legacy was destined to be carried forward through their descendants in the Reed family. Saul hoped to cash in on the Alaska Gold Rush and started the White Star Steam Company in 1900. His pregnant daughter was riding home on one of the vessels to have her baby in Seattle when the ship lost its rudder at sea. The ship and passengers were eventually rescued, but the harrowing event and the resulting lawsuits took an emotional toll and nearly bankrupt Saul. Saul died of leukemia in 1906 at the age of 63. Mark Reed immediately took the reins of Simpson and the company's Peninsula Railroad, moving the headquarters from Seattle to Shelton. Mark oversaw tremendous changes from 1906 to 1933, with expanding operations and logging, banking, railroading, and the founding of the Shelton Navigation Company. Mark was a key player in the building of the city of Shelton and in the construction of a fireproof business district after the 1914 Shelton Fire. Mark served two terms as mayor of Shelton and in 1914 was elected to the state legislature, eventually serving as Speaker of the House. In Olympia, Mark successfully sponsored bills promoting worker safety and medical insurance and was a tireless advocate for the city of Shelton. Mark was a favorite candidate for governor, but declined to run. Reed was instrumental in financing the construction of Shelton General Hospital in 1920. While on one of his many business trips, Mark and several other lumber executives contracted dysentery through a contaminated food handler at a conference in Chicago in September 1933. He died a few days later at Providence Hospital, Seattle. The company was growing and innovating through its early days with the introduction of portable logger camps transported up the Olympic Mountains on railroad cars starting in 1917. In the mid-1920s, Simpson built the high steel bridge over the Skokomish River, then the fifth highest logging bridge in the world. Built to provide access to timber ever higher into the Olympic Mountains, it remains a popular destination to this day. Numerous permanent logging camps were built over the years, the largest being Camp Grisdale, housing 52 families plus dorms for dozens of single men. The community of Camp Grisdale included a school, stores, a bowling alley, and a barber shop from 1946 to its closing in 1985. Simpson continued to expand its markets with hemlock lumber for the East Coast upon the opening of the Panama Canal in 1914. 
and lumber for Japan following the Great Earthquake of 1923. Upon Mark's death, sons Frank and Bill Reed continued their forebears' legacy of growth and innovation. With trusted general manager Chris Kreienbaum, they introduced the sustained yield philosophy in the management of Simpson Timber Resources, a paradigm shift from simply cutting forests and moving on. Simpson was a leader in the tree farm movement, launched in the early 1940s. In 1943, Simpson joined with other local timber owners to form the South Olympic Tree Farm Company at Shelton, which contributed to the propagation of over six million seedlings by 1945. The intense pressures of World War II required aggressive expansion for Simpson to survive, acquiring the McCleary Timber Company along with the entire town of McCleary. Simpson made huge improvements to the dilapidated town and then transferred ownership to residents and the municipality for less than the cost of the many upgrades. In 1946, Bill Reed estimated that the company would soon deplete its remaining timber. Simpson moved quickly to create the visionary Sustained Yield Harvesting Plan for the Shelton area in cooperation with the U.S. Forest Service. The company then added new timber resources by purchasing forest lands in the California Redwoods. In reducing redwood waste, Simpson again innovated by introducing methods to manufacture pulp from redwood fibers, turning what was a worthless byproduct into a valuable commodity. Simpson's involvement with pulp and paper manufacturing actually began back in 1929 in acquiring an interest in the Rainier paper and pulp mill in Shelton. The business grew with the addition of plants in Everett, Northern California, and Michigan. Simpson added an advanced 22,000 square foot research facility in Redmond in 1961, with continued growth through the 1980s. Simpson acquired the Tacoma Craft Mill in 1985 and by 1990 was a national producer of fine papers. In 1971, Gary Reed replaced his father, Bill, as chairman, and Furman Mosley, Gary's brother-in-law, became president, assuring the company's role as an independent family business. Access to harvestable timber was a challenging process through the relative boom of the 1970s and the deep recession in the 1980s, resulting in forest land purchases from Canada to southern Chile. With the closing of the 20th century, Simpson's focus increasingly turned from paper back to its core timber and lumber business in the Pacific Northwest, under the leadership of Chairman Colin Mosley and President Ray Tennyson. With every generation at Simpson, the company and its employees have made great effort in the care for the environment. Whether making major environmental improvements at Tacoma Craft, removing the dam on Goldsboro Creek and Shelton to improve fish habitat, or implementing a habitat conservation plan to protect wildlife, water, and forest resources. At the onset of the new millennium, the fundamental differences required in managing both Simpson's manufacturing and its timberland operations led to the decision in 2002 to divide Simpson Timber Company into two entities, Craft Paper, Lumber and Door Manufacturing under Simpson Investment Company, and the timber operations became the Green Diamond Resource Company. Under the leadership of President Alan Trinkwald, Simpson Lumber Company grew significantly with the acquisitions of the Longview Washington Stud Mill, the Johns Prairie Washington Dimensional Mill, along with the Meldrum, Georgia and Georgetown, South Carolina Southern Yellow Pine Mills. Recognizing the scale, efficiency and quality products of the modern Simpson Lumber Company, the thousands of skilled employees through the years and the tens of thousands of verdant, productive forest lands growing today, founder Saul Simpson would be truly amazed by the 125-year legacy of the Simpson Lumber Company. Simpson's Northwest Mills included the Longview, Washington operations, Commencement Bay in Tacoma, and in Shelton area, Mill 3, Mill 5, and Johns Prairie. When you talk about Simpson, you talk about generational employment. And uh, 
My grandfather worked here, and uh, my, my father worked here, and then I worked here. Because of the multi-generational thing, it Simpson has been an emotional, uh, long-term relationship that uh, will probably be missed. Uh, the camaraderie with all the truck drivers, I've got a list of over 200 truck drivers that when they come in, I see them on the computer and I try to address everybody by the first name and just the camaraderie, just, you know, this is in my blood, heavy equipment and, and I'm just gonna miss it. I'm, I'm sad to see it go but I understand this industry, it's always a possibility, so. Um, but yeah, it's, it was always, uh, you know, I, I raised my kids on timber dollars. It was, a, it was a way to pay your mortgage and to raise your family, you know, and had insurance, and, and that was it back then. You know, that, that's, I think a lot of us are looking at, we were hoping that Simpson would maybe sell, but we'd keep our job here, maybe have a pay cut or something, and, and keep on going, but you know, Younger guys have to go look for work, and, and older guys are, are like me are closer to retire. Like I tell the guys down there, I feel like I've been uh, here for 27 years, and most of these guys are like family. I said I spent because I work swinging, and most of the time I spend more time with these guys down here than I did my family. But I told them that doesn't mean I love you. <laughs> I started at Simpson in 1990 and I've been working on the track and being a conductor and a locomotive engineer. We bring in empty lumber cars and switch out loaded lumber cars for empty lumber cars. Simpson Railroad has four switch locomotives, uh, tie tamper, Speeders, local crane, all workers. Tell me how you got started. Let's see, I was about 24. I was right out of the Marine Corps, debarker operator. Bringing logs up the incline, uh, if they're oversized, you'll cut out the oversized part and throw it to the ground. Working as part of the team. There's a great bunch of guys down here. It's been a pleasure working with everybody. The best thing about this job has basically been uh, the people I work with, the bosses I've had, uh, really good crew. Um, when things go wrong, everybody comes together. I, he's definitely my hero because uh, he provided a stable, good job and just gave me everything I always needed and always worked, worked so hard. And I appreciate it. Simpsons always had a lot of long-term employees, sometimes second and third generation employees. Uh, sons and daughters come into work after their, uh, usually after their father. Uh, and that's partly because, or mainly because, Simpson was uh, a good employer, a stable employer. People wanted to work there. It provided safe working conditions, interesting work, and good pay and benefits. We didn't have uh, a need for heaters in the old days because we all uh, pretty much worked up a sweat. Uh, I think. Uh, Technology-based, uh, at the Mill 3, we had approximately uh, 50, 52 people on a shift, and on, in an eight-hour production shift, we produced uh, 100,000 board feet on a good day. Uh, in today's technology, we've got a little over 20 people on the shift, and we produce probably, on an average, 70, 80,000 board feet an hour. When I first began, uh, the technology was, was pretty basic. Uh, but over the course of the 90s, and particularly the first, the early 2000, 2005 period of time, uh, as, as computerization became more and more uh, useful and used in the, in the lumber production business, uh, it really began to change the business uh, and changed how people competed in the business. You know, you spend 37 years with them, yeah, you're going to miss a lot of them. A lot of them you've seen, you've kind of grew up with them, you know, and uh, a lot of them you've seen start here and grow up and yeah, it's been, uh, been fun. The family ethic that Saul started when he founded the company is still alive and well in the company today. Uh, it's a family owned business, it, the family's name is on the business, which I think is very significant, and it's always um, 
I guess, designated uh, product of high quality, uh, but also is a shout out to the workforce and, and the ownership in that uh, if, you're, if you're proud enough to put your name on it, your ethics uh, and your, your business acumen and the way you treat people is advertised every day on everything you make. Today here we're gathered to run the last log at Mill 3 for Simpson Lumber Company in Shelton, Washington. Alright, here it is! Long time. The thing that's always impressed me uh, about Simpson's employees were their willingness to really pitch in to uh, cooperate and work with each other, uh, to support each other. Each person was a character. Each person had a great personality in their own right. They were all really hard workers, intelligent, and trying to do the best for the team. It's taking care of my family. That's, I guess that's all you can ask for. Simpson has taken good care of us, and a steady job, too. So, you know, I put two girls through college, and hey, what more can a guy ask for? Well, for me, it, it gave me a chance to stay in the lumber industry. I worked at another company previously for about 18 years. Chance to work with a lot of great guys. Uh, guys are really dedicated to the company, and uh, it's really been a good ride. I've been log in, account in log accounting for 29 years. 29 years, wow. Tracking the logs from the point of delivery all the way through payment. There's a lot of guys in this business. <laughs> Have you ever had to work extra hard to earn your stripes in, a, in the lumber business? Well, I don't know about working extra hard. I think that uh, Simpson especially has been extremely supportive of all of the employees. Uh, this is brutal. <laughs> And we have uh, another sales rep, Tammy Williams, who's with us here. And she's done a phenomenal job as well. And just the acceptance of all people in this company has been phenomenal. What have you enjoyed most about your job with Simpson and, and sales? Uh, the people, actually. All the relationships that we've had the opportunity to build. I've been here for 10 years. Uh, my dad started in 1938. And basically, somebody in my family's worked for them since 1938 till present. So uh, what is that, uh, 62, 77 years straight, my family's been employed by Simpson. So it's, uh, it's a pretty sentimental day for me. 125 years of history coming to an end. And uh, I'm grateful to uh, Simpson's owners, the Reed family. It's been a, a wonderful career working for Simpson, 41 years. Uh, I was always proud of being a part of Simpson because of its reputation for honesty and in integrity. It was known throughout the Northwest as a top-notch outfit. <laughs>